Biden's bad government have dominated conversations, especially on the social media space. This also forms the crux of the news conference by members of the Mietiala Kaltahore Social Cultural Association announces its dissociation from the planned nationwide protests. We even view the protest as an attempt to sabotage the takeoff of the ministry. So definitely, not only our youths, our arrows, every conscious pastoralist will not join any protest now. <laughs> In a related development, members of the Northern Nigeria Youth Forum also announced their withdrawal from the protests. The situation we are in Nigeria is artificial. Even though the economy hardship is a global matter, all over the world are facing it. But by the grace of God, we are still standing on, calling on government. But not this protest that these people want to organize. Because why we say these people were out of them, and we are calling on our sons and daughters of northern Nigeria to withdraw. We come up with a position that is going to be the best for the nation. However, the forum of former leaders of the National Association of Nigerian Students appears uncertain about its position. We have resolved not to participate in any process. And we have not resolved to also give government time no. Hey, to resolve. No this is our position. Right. Our position, we cannot at no time stop anybody because when we were students, we protested. No, no, no. So during that time, on that situation, we have not taken a decision to make sure that we are consulting other sister organizations to come out with a position. At no time are we in any way accepted that we are not going to protest. There are nothing of such discourse. Yet, some of their members are optimistic about the policies of the government. The student loans program is laudable, and we applaud President Bola Ametunubu for the policy. We believe that the policy will reduce dropout rates and in a long time increase our innovative and productive workforce. Although there is no clear indication of those behind the protest, there have been numerous calls across the country for patience and dialogue instead of protest. We even view the protest as an attempt to sabotage the takeoff of the ministry. So definitely, not only our youths, our arrows, every conscious pastoralist will not join any protest now because we have suffered too much in this country. We have faced persecution, we have faced prosecution, we have faced propaganda of different nature. Now we have an opportunity to support government to develop this ministry and people are coming up with a plan protest. I don't think our members, whether conscientized or not, will not join any protests. And we want whoever is protesting to avoid our cattle markets, to avoid the assets belonging to the pastoralists. Because if you think you can protest, you see our cars, you think they are cheap meat. It's an expensive business to touch our cattle. All right, so quite a number of issues on the burner here today, but we've got two gentlemen joining us to shed light on the goings on of the country. Honorable Ahiozo Agbonaima is a former chairman House Committee on Nigeria, U.S. Parliamentary Relations, and former chairman at the committee, the investigator Pencom at the time. Sitting beside him is Chief Gosson Okoye, who himself is a former presidential candidate of UDP. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you very much. Robert. Honorable, let me start with you. I mean, you know, several conversations, I'm sure you might have also heard it, uh, discontent, growing concerns about the impact of the policies that the government has. It doesn't, well, they say, yes, we're doing a lot to come up with very good policies, but the result out there appears to be the challenge. Many don't seem to be feeling the impact of those policies. They see the figure still going south, and so the discontent, and why something that, look, we need to hit the streets, and get our voices heard. You've heard that, haven't you? Well, let me first of all thank our viewers and uh, good morning to everyone out there. I'm happy to be with you. Uh, let me just say this with half your favor. This country belongs to all of us. Mr. President alone cannot solve the problem within our dear nation. Of course, we all know it over the years, how this country has been bastardized Corruption has eaten us deeply. And uh, when you fight corruption, corruption fight back at you. You are aware 
all the investigation that I, I did when I was in the House. And to the glory of God, I'm still fighting corruption as a Federal Commissioner Code of Conduct Bureau. And you see President Amen Bolatinibu GCFRO is not perfect. I am not perfect. None of us are perfect. With all the policy he has brought to bear, no man will want to do something that will affect people that he tried to govern, rather to uplift the Nigerian people. But we do have people that are not willing to put Nigeria first. Like I've often said, there are three tenets of democratic doctrine that must be adhered to, namely loyalty, participation, and commitment to your dear nation. You must participate in those things that will bring dividends of democracy, democracy to the union of the people, and you must be committed to your country. You must do everything humanly possible so that Nigeria can be a more the leading nation. You said there are three concerns. Yes. Loyalty. Participation mm -hmm. and commitment. Commitment. You must be committed. You must participate. You must be loyal. Are you loyal to your country? Is that from the level of leadership? Are you asking for... <laughs> all Nigerians put together. My friend, we were discussing just now. Mm -hmm. We Nigerians, all of us put together. Mm. One way or the other, we have not been able to do those things, to adhere to these three principal tenets of democratic doctrine. No, it was, no, it was what? Our commitment. We are all to blame? For all of us are all to blame. Now, in election, I've contested for election, which you know. Crow, crow eyes. <laughs> see me, see you. My mandate was stolen. I neck ring the election. And the man who did it was caught by DSS. DSS did wonderfully, did a fantastic investigation. They took him. He was brought to tribunal. DSS came to testify. The chairman of the tribunal said the DSS report is inconsequential. The DSS who came to testify, he says testimony is consequential. Now, at the end of the day, we want to appeal. The justice, Ihemo Wosu, a wonderful woman. Do you know what happened? They tried to bribe her, she refused. She was kidnapped. They killed the only kid, the driver. She was in captivity for over 30 days. Today, that woman is not the justice of the Supreme Court. She, that is a kind of woman that should be celebrated in this country. Somebody that will refuse bribe. Okay, so, so all of us put together in this country, we should stop blaming one, say President Tinibu, where are the governors for God's sake? We have to resist governors in this country. What have they done? What about okay. those living so, in their states? <coughs> so federal chief, allocation is coming. Hmm. What do they do with the federal allocation? What do you think about this, God's name? Because there's right. no local government anymore. Let, let, let's hear from him as well. Um, well, thanks for the very lovely question, and uh, thanks for uh, thanks to the audience. And my, my colleague, my my friend there, is uh, he made some valid point, but the issue remains: you do not put something on nothing and expect it to stand. And um, the the way the people in government have behaved is the reason why the people are reacting. If you're insensitive to what people are saying. To what people are feeling, they may come to you may come to a point where everybody will say, "Okay, to hell with everything," and that's where we are gradually getting to. And it's not it's not a very some people say, "Well, this is an interesting time," but uh, not in a positive note. Mm -hmm. um, like in law, they will tell you in negligence and in the issue of duty of care, they say you owe your neighbor a duty of care, and somebody will say, "Who's your neighbor?" And in some cases, especially Lord Atkins, in the case of Donovan and Stevenson, said it clearly. It is not the person that is only physically close to you. It is the person that is likely to be affected by your negligent conduct. That person is your neighbor. The person that is likely to be affected by your negligent conduct or omission. And who we are supposed to have in reasonable contemplation when making that act. But the people that have governed us, they have not done that. 
they owe Nigerians a duty of care. And if they lived up to that duty of care, subsidy is gone. It shouldn't have been the first statement on the day it was won. And that's why these things are happening this way. Subsidy is gone. It's like you attend a, a burial and you say, I killed this man. So should we what, bring back subsidy? No, it's not about bringing back subsidy, even if you want to do that. It's not the first thing. You don't even handle it like that way. It's like when you startle a child and when you startle an adult, the reactors are different. Even if you want to do it, if it is the only thing you must do, timing is important. How you do it is important. And that's why all the measures that are being taken now are like fire brigade. They are like you want to, these are things that should have been done. You prepare the ground. I mean, it's like you're going to farm and you carry them and throw inside the bush. You know you choose them, but it can never grow. Or it can never even grow to be fruitful. You must clear the ground, you must till the ground, and then put the yam in there. And then believe that at least uh, termites or beetle will not eat it. And it will terminate and produce what you want. There was no preparation for that statement. And that statement has derailed everything. Because petroleum, oil and gas is, the, is at the heart of what makes Nigeria move around. Mm. So and everything about it, you must be careful. And that's why I talk about duty of care. You owe Nigeria a duty of care. And have we made that announcement? Everything is eroded. So we're only trying, it's like you want to farm and you go and open a dam. Close everything you have done. Mm. So whilst, you know, I think that, yes, indeed, you know, subsidy is gone was the president's statement. Yes. For some people, they will tell you that where mm -hmm. the subsidy was announced as being gone was not really where the problem started. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem started when subsidy was taken away from the forex sector. Uh, that's when things now became, things turned upside down, really. Uh, because at that time, I, mean, I, I don't know whether to say is Naira that was floated or is Dollar that was floated. I don't know which one because all of them now are, exactly, all of them are floating now. But, but if, if we were to look at it, yes. It would seem that Nigerians at that period were bracing and there was, you know, uncertainty. There was, they were bracing for what exactly will be the situation with mm -hmm. subsidy on with, petroleum, especially mm -hmm. petroleum, especially petrol. Yes. But the subsidy on dollar, mm. you know, the CBN setting the exchange rate yes. and then all of a sudden saying, no, market forces will determine that. It would mm. seem that that's what sent everything oh, well, into, well, well, into well, a see, spin. You see, what, we're, what I'm saying. Yes. The person, people that rule the country should know better. And they should know if we take this action A, or if we formulate this policy, the likely consequence, we are going to do B to contain it. Those things were not there. There must be safety nets for you to do any particular action or any, implement any particular policy. Mm. So having done that, and then you now follow it up with this other one. That's what the law is called, contributing negligence. But in you have case, done one, and instead of continuing, you do another one. It, and that one you think you are doing, but wait a minute. It, 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 in no way helps you yeah, to contain just, just it. A, just a moment. In a country where you know that some people, their job is just to take position yes. and wait for what government will say. I mean, mm. regardless of whatever government does, I mean, we've been told that how you know, monies of this country are in the hands of private people. Yeah, of course. Or I private agree. pockets. And, and, and that if you were to put the wealth together of mm -hmm. those people, yeah. they most likely can run down this country. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with, have, have you heard the, that the, before? The, the monies that we're talking about, yeah, of course, it's in private hands. I mean, individuals put together in Nigeria. Exactly. And that's, that's the problem. So, so in, in that kind of problem. situation, do yes. you think that, I mean, how, how likely is it that, you know, that, that kind of, those kinds of policies, I mean, waiting to see or announcing before you make a move. In, in, in that sort of situation, do you really think that that is really feasible? But what's wrong with consult consultation? That's part of governance. You consult with people. Even my people say, if you have too many enemies, you buy drinks for some, so that they can at least let you be. Do you understand? Yeah. If you have too many enemies. Once upon a time, during the first, Second World War, at the time, Hitler had non-aggression pact with Britain. But at the time, when he felt comfortable, he breached it himself. So well, the point is, you have to consult, that's part of governance. Okay. Like my friend had talked about governors. The governors are in the state, who do they consult in what they are doing? Okay, take for instance, people talk about Obasanjo. Obasanjo came in, he put people in AMPP, it was APP then, he put them in government. Mm -hmm. The national chairman of the party was part of his government. But since we have been doing this and we have been clapping with our hand, there is no way you would tell me that APC has only the other, is a concentration of all the intelligent people in Nigeria or people that can be effective. I mean, you seek out people for wherever they are, and they use them to solve your problem. Was Okonji well in any, in any, in any party before she was appointed to government? 
Mm. You see, but we, unless you have to, you, we must have an open mind. What we are running is a closed system that will not help in any way. Okay. Solutions can be found from different angles. Let me, let me quickly take Honorable Agwana yeah, on this one. Before you go further, I would like to respond. Yeah, before you respond to him, I want, <laughs> to, I want to take you up on a question because you have said that we are all to blame. That was your, your opening statement. Your opening statement, you know, says that it, it's Nigerians that are to blame. So because some people will ask the question, yes, whilst, yes, there will be different levels of blame as to, you know, what exactly is happening right now, leadership will bear the greater blame. They will bear the greatest blame. As a, as a matter of fact, they will bear the greatest blame. So I, I'm just wondering, from what you have seen of leadership so far, be it at the federal level, be it at the state level, be it at the local government level, do you think that our leaders have shown through their, their deeds and their behavior um, within society that indeed there is hardship and is affecting them? Well, uh, before I answer your question, definitely I will. Let me just say this. If you could remember, the very day Mr. President was sworn in at Eagle Square, he merely said that he was going to remove West subsidy. And don't forget, all that is gone. Hold on. Hold he merely. He, say, he pronounced that he was going to remove no, first subsidy. No, he said first subsidy is gone. Mm -hmm. How can you, that was the declaration. He, wasn't, he didn't say he was going to. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say he's say gone. He's gone. He, he was not going to be. That's what he said. Okay, he's gone at the go square. Mm -hmm. That does not be, you know, removed. That tells you what power he Hold carries. Hold on. He's a president. Let, let me tell you. At that ego square, at the four pump, people have already jacked up. The price of fuel went up the ceiling. Tomatoes. <laughs> Onions, pepper, uh, gone off the roof. Even what I live in the villages, they have gone off the roof. And is it not the same removal of fuel subsidy that other candidates of different political party campaign with? Yeah. Mr. Pre former you know, Vice President Atiku campaign of removing fuel subsidy. You know, former governor Peter Obi campaign. A removal of fuel subsidy. Guaguaso, essentially former governor, campaigned against removing fuel subsidy. So the same president, Tinubu, campaigned removal of fuel subsidy. Now, so the what's the, what was the point there? The bond, okay, the bond is approved now. <laughs> the issue is this those that have messed up, like I've said before, the crude oil. Stolen from this country that have gone to global destination, that I have brought to be, that have investigated, that the whole country, that China took it upon you, this station, you took it upon yourself to join me, and you all did a fantastic work by trying to on earth to push this. But guess what? What happened? Governor of Central Bank, former governor, let me feel it. Over 67 trillion, I can quote, I can say it without missing words, stolen from him. The former Akata General of this country stole over 211 billion that we investigated. Guess That's what? So. That is a man that is giving Chief Tassi title, Ikano. So we celebrate. Mediocrity, we celebrate corruption. So wait, from, if I understand you, you're passing the buck from leadership again to the people. Mm. All of us, including, including you and I, all of us. <laughs> did because what? seeing a crime, what, what did we refusing do? <laughs> to report the scene of that crime to the nearest mm -hmm. law enforcement agency, you and I, is as guilty as the man or woman committed you, that. You crime. reported that, you know, <laughs> you got support and you reported this, you highlighted no, no, it. And you know, you know, no, 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 no. What came of it? You don't, you don't, you must, it's a continuous fight. Mm. You must continue mm. to fight. This is not that issue, it's just showcase or one show or two show, you end. Go to America. Well, what, so, so, what the question so, now is uh, well, you have deviated totally, you've, you've responded no, to that. No, well, the, the, exactly, leadership. Let's go back again to leadership. Now, leadership. We have since. No, let me ask you a question. Now. Yes. Let me tell you this. There's uh, an adage I will tell you, very simple. An, an elderly man who was the head of the clown, he sent a message, one of his uh, workers to go to the community, go and give 
these 200,000 Naira to the community because they deserve to have it to solve some of the problem. And he got there, he gave them 2,000 Naira and came back and reported to the head of the clan that I've given them the 20,000 Naira. So, 20,000 or 200,000? Just 20,000 Naira. I'm just making, you know, do you know the staff who went for that errands pocketed 18,000 Naira? And he came back to report to the head that he had done, he had submitted the money, he had given them the money, and they were all saying, okay, no problem. All thing, they came to the house of the head of the clown that, oh, Thank you for the money you sent to us. He said, what was given to you? He said, it was 2,000. He said, what? He called the, client, the messenger. I said, what happened? I gave you 20,000. He said, sir, I gave them 20,000 naira. So now, can Mr. President, mm -hmm. Tinibu, city in Abuja, correct the governors in Edo State, correct the governor in Udo, correct the governor in Akwaibo, Correct the governor in Lagos. Can he be at the same place? Now, it is the commitment that I have said before. What about the ministers who he appointed? Thank you. Report to him. Thank you. The same minister. Yeah. What I'm saying is this. There are people that try to derail the will of progress of Mr. President. The ministers? Some ministers? Some. And they're still in government? That is what I'm saying, that Mr. President must do the needful to send their packing. Some of them are not working. So why are they there? And some governors are not supposed to be governors. Mm. They are not supposed to be. Even though we are pointing fingers. Wh which I'm ministry? Also, they are pointing fingers. We are we talking about the center. Hold on. Wh wh which, ministry have you not seen? To state? which ministry have you not seen enough from? Have you done your investigative journalism yourself? No, no, no. You said no, no, some, no. some Go are and not... do your, conduct your investigative yeah. journalism as a journalist. Are you, I, are I, you I, passing the book again? Professional as you are. Can I say so? Are you passing the book again? You <laughs> said some ministers are not working. <laughs> and we're asking you, to which me, ministers I, have I, you I seen? I can tell you, I can raise some of the ministers are not working. I don't know. And Mr. President... Which ones Mr. are you Mr. not satisfied Mr. President is watching with? everybody. The report card is coming to him. I just watch him, give him the opportunity. Which ministries are you not having? Those who, ba who basada this country, they are working freely. Honorable. And nobody, nobody's talking which, about it. Which ministries? Mr. President, he cannot alone fight the problem of this country alone. That's what you I'm saying. You don't want to name which, which ministries you're not happy with, so the president can know. And so you want to hear from me? Go and do your job. So you're passing the bucket. Uh, uh, so how would the president work if you can't tell him? Can I well, the president, he, he, okay. he, he knows, he understands those who are not working. He understands the governors that try to derail the will of this progress of the country that have stolen the resources coming to their state, goes to voice me. As money comes, they travel outside the country. So every well, bug, every problem is on top of Mr. President, but it's unfortunate. Uh, well, um, one U.S. resident once said, the bug stops here. Mm -hmm. The box stops here. That's why you're president. And that's why you campaign for it. And that's why the office is different. Whatever is done from that office affects everybody. And don't also forget, yes, Nigeria is said to be a federal system, but in practice, it's more like a unitary system. For those that understand the two systems, the way the things have been happening. And then it also brings in the duty of vicarious responsibility of members of the party. Like when Buhari was there, Buhari did not him. He was not an independent candidate. He contested. There were people that were his enablers. There were people that drafted him, and they ran on a party. And how did that party control or checkmate what was going wrong? Everybody sat back and watched things go wrong. And then it's confident now for people to say, oh, it was another administration that did that. Even if it's another administration that even did that. This what you are all this apart. And that brings to another issue of when people are in government, they weaken political parties. And political parties, because if political parties are strong and they can checkmate their members, including the people in office, some of the things won't be happening. But you see, like during the Second Republic, anything that is so serious that you wanted to discuss with Shagari, what do you say, Ena Akinloe? Akinloe was the national chairman. It was a powerful one at that. And that, the Second Republic, no matter how they were overthrown, it still remains in some of his, to toss of his practice, the golden age of politics. Mm. But you see, we will invite the national chairman to say, what, how is this thing, how does this tally with the programs of NBN? And other parties like that. And when he won, he invited, there were five parties. 
He invited everybody. But he wants to set the uni uh, national unity government, even though he won, that he said he was going to rule. It was only UPN that said they don't want to be part of it. MPP was there. GMPP was there. NAP was there. Do you understand? So they, 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 there has to be some kind of cohesion after every national election. And that's what we're not doing. And then the political parties have become so weak, they can't even do anything anymore. They can't discipline their members. And then... So wait, what, what would the parties have done in this case now? Well, since the president is here now, yes. and he, if he's got policies and they're not coming through, is it that the political parties have a role to play here? Of course. He was elected by the party. Of course, under the, under the laws, people don't contest elections. It is parties that actually contest elections. There are a plethora of cases up to Supreme Court that say political parties contest elections. Mm -hmm. And you contest an election and you go and file an so action. So what can they do in this case? At the tribunal and you don't put the name of the party. The case is over. You can't even go anywhere. So what can they do that they, they're not doing? That's what I'm saying. The parties have become so weak, they can't control. It's like most laws in Nigeria now. Laws have become so weak, they can't catch the strong. But they're always strong enough to catch the weak. Mm -hmm. so, so the way we are, the political parties, mm -hmm. if they are strong, the programs you are running are supposed to be the programs and the ideologies of the party. Mm -hmm. But now, okay. when people get into government, they use the paraphernalia of government to settle personal scores and dress them up as national issue. Mm -hmm. That is the law of the country. We take, mm -hmm. bagging rights have become the order of the day. We did this with it. How does that solve the problem of the people? Do you Which is the main reason why you're even in politics. Do you think that as a result of this, argu this argument you've made, that, yes. uh, you know, that parties are weak, is yes. why you know, people are taking matters into their own hands. They, they realize that they cannot, you know, re no wait control. on political parties to uh, help, you know, raise an argument or counter whatever it is or provide an alternative to what government is doing. Yes. Do you think that that's why there's now talk of a protest, at least you know, perhaps to be able to hold government accountable? Of course, that's, that's what it's Do you agree, do you agree because, sir? Because, you see, the people have uh, looked at government mm -hmm. for so long. Solve our problem. Nigerians are long suffering. Nigerians are very easy people to rule. But the thing is, when you consistently do negative things, it gets to a point where people will say, oh, what the heck? What do I even have to lose other than my hardship? So we have gone to the point, they've looked at the political parties, the political parties are not doing what they're supposed to do. The people in government are doing so much to weaken the parties. So it's a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. So you have gone to a point where government can't solve problems because Parties cannot fraud them anymore. I'm, I'm a little concerned that yes. you keep saying that using the term, what do I have to lose? Yes. Because the idea behind protests mm. is to gain something, is to yeah. change something. Of course. But if you keep saying, what do I have to lose? It's yeah. like I say, what the people are planning is to unleash chaos. You see, when you, when you keep listening to people, mm. when people talk, when you go around in the streets, people don't, we don't have, we don't have hard measures anymore. We don't have, okay, let's talk, let's dialogue. You know, everything leads to violence. You go to you go to restaurants, you go to bars, you go to motor parks. You see it every day. People are angry. People are frustrated. And you see the protest. Yes, protest is supposed to bring the attention of government to some of these policies that are not good. Mm -hmm. That's the right thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, but and that's what I guess people are also planning to do. But the point is, because of the rhetorics, people on both sides are concerned. You see, it's not as if people cannot protest. And it's not as if, of course, government is become jittery because they have, to an extent, done a whole lot of things that they feel is not right with the people. Okay, look at Ken. By the time the man said I will not assent to this, he had gone way too bad, too wrong. He has gone too far away. And the people have started, and then other people entered and hijacked it. So what we are praying and what we are saying, if there must be protests, yes, they have even said we are not going to be violent. They're only saying this suffering is too much. And then where did it what start the from? What did data have said it? No, no. I mean, you see them on social media, you read people, even on TV, you read them, say, don't shoot police, don't push police, don't do this, don't do that. Police don't shoot people. You, have, you, you must have been hearing that. So, you see, for me, because it's a crowd thing, some things may always go wrong. You, there are always people that are easily excited when they get into the crowd. But if protests are the normal way you do protest, people should protest and say, we do not like this policy A, policy B, policy C. It's not as if the government has not done something. Let me, let me come there are here. things that are good that they are doing, but the point is, you have done one huge negative thing that makes all that uh, makes all this pain into insignificance. That's the problem. That's where we are. Let, let and me. certain things must be done to pull the chestnut out of fire. Let, let me okay. come, let me say this. You ask a question. Yes, parties have a role to play, a huge role to play. 
okay, political parties. We do, I think I remember having seen manifesto from various political parties, mm -hmm. what they intend to do to change the narrative. Because this, we are sitting on the keg of a gunpowder. There's salvation, there's hunger created by some of us. Nigerians, today, I buy fuel, to fuel my vehicle, the smallest vehicle that's supposed to be 14,000 Naira, is now 54,000 Naira. So every Nigerian, including me, I'm getting, I'm receiving the pain. You can imagine some of my staff can't even come to work. They can't even afford to pay for transportation because of the mega, mega salary they are receiving. Where they used to come from Nasarawa to right here, I go square now. That used to cost about 1,000, is about 4,000 to them. Some of them say, sir, we can't come to work. Nigerians are suffering. But who are the brain behind this? Who brought us to where we are? That's the border. That's not the question. Who is asking you who are they? Exactly, you know but you won't say. You, do, you are drifting <laughs> us. You I'm not in it, but let me also tell you now. Which I just made you. I, I, I told you earlier. <coughs> which we have no, discussed. You, you haven't told me the name. We have discussed this before. This on this program, me and you. I said, look, the governor See, of Central uh, Bank. Hold on. The governor of Central Bank. Who is going, current one or the former one? The former one. Mm. He emptied the treasury of this country well, and bastardized the nation. That's case, an allegation, sir. The case is in the courts, uh, so we understand. Okay. These are the problems that I'm having. The no, case no. is in the court, right? A man... You don't like the case being in court? <laughs> you want to be settled outside. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The case is the court does not stop you from talking about it. The case is the court does not stop you from investigating okay, the so, subject matter. Okay, so the case is the court does not stop you going to look. So I am happy. What stops before. you from naming those ministries that you say you're not happy with now? Okay, the one I have named, what have you done with it? Which one have you named? I told you the former governor of Central Bank. He's before the court. He's in the courts. Do you know what he's told? He's in the court, Honorable. That is why we are where we are. Where? Where are we? Where see, are we? You, you, You're see, asking the, me where the, are we? The president said, listen, listen, I sought for this job. Yes. Don't pity me. Okay. Uh, so if party members... Allowed him... No, no, hold on. If allowed him members, to solve the mess that he made. If party members he know made, that he made some situation. ministries are not performing, and you're not telling him, how are you helping him? Okay, okay. He met hold, no, on, no, hold on, hold on. How are you helping okay. him? <clears throat> Let me tell you this. Mm. I am telling you, I'm happy that some of your colleagues that used to be here, that used to interview me, to ask me a question me. Mr. Ajure is in the presidency. Linda, from here, is in the presidency now. They are not the presidents. Don't say that. They are not the president. They can tell you what the president is doing. You but have, I'm not his spokesman, but I'm telling you. You have seen some him. ministries that are not, they are not happy, they are not working. Give Mr. Which president the opportunity. Mm. It takes time to repair, okay, to so destroy. Let, 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 let me, let me wait, take wait, this, because you, you have I'm said, just a, just a minute, <clears> Mr. <throat> Um, Honourable, and let me just quickly ask you, because one of the things you said is that our citizens, people, citizens must show loyalty, they must mm -hmm. show participation, they must show commitment. Well, Which are some of the nothing. things that usually come <clears throat> out in a protest? Mm -hmm. A protest sometimes is something that is born out of loyalty. Because mm -hmm. the people who sometimes join a protest, some of them are okay. But, you know, to show that other people are really bearing the brunt of this they say, look, this is our country. Sometimes... I am not against protest. Aha. Uh -huh. So I just wanted to ask Are you... you the, is that the question? I, I want to ask you... Do I you have always been protesting. I'm protesting right now. Do you think I it is okay... Do you think it is okay for Nigerians to say that they want to come out and protest on the 1st of August? Is, it, I, I, is this something that you think is fine by, by citizens? Everybody has the right to protest. I've always protested. And I'm also protesting right here. So it is how I came here... I didn't have any gun, I didn't have any cutlass, I didn't have any, anything. I came here to speak, to just to throw more light, to buttress my point, how I feel in this country. I am also feeling the pain, but somebody caused this pain upon us. It was not caused by Senator 
His Excellency Bola Tinubu. Uh, it was party not caused by him. Your elected, this problem was caused by those. Your, listen, your party you, was elected to solve the problem. Him? No, which yeah. party was in government before him? Was he the president? No, no. Which party was in government? No, was he the president? That's why I was talking about parties. It is what did he do as a party? He's the leader of the party. To start with, he's the leader of the party. Leader, is he not there? Yes. Then and now, he's the leader of the party. Has he ever said he's not the leader? Do you? Ah, what are we talking about? You see, you see, in our let's ability, and like I keep saying, you know, it's about bragging rights. It's about people doing wrong things, right, wrong attitude. When when people are in government and they feel this is my own, you shouldn't talk. For goodness' sake, you're dis you're you're dealing with the destiny of the whole country. Mm. I think and he's not his own private from. He's what? about to name the ministry. He wants to call it spade a spade. <laughs> Okay, let's wait. No, we are waiting. The names of the ministers. Is that right? <laughs> Mr. Chimbali. The, no, no, okay, don't name the ministers. Name the ministries. Just the ministries, if you don't want to name the names. Mr. Yeah. Chimbali. Which ministries? Mr. Chimbali. Sincerely, let's call a spade a spade. This is serious. This is not a joke. So which ministries? Nigerians are suffering. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are feeling the pain. We've heard you say that several times. Can now, this into and you are feeling the pain. I am feeling the pain. Mr. President is also feeling the pain. But now, let me tell you, you kept on asking me to name those. No, you, 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 those. You, you said some ministers are not doing the job I said the some ministers of ministry are not doing what they ought to do. And we said which ones? And who appointed them? Who appointed which ones? Just wait. Did they become ministers? Wait yeah. and let's see what Mr. President will do. That's Give me right. the opportunity. I will be the one to come here to tell you let me tell you, I'm very patient. I hope the party members tell the president the truth. No. Listen to me. I hope they Ooh. tell him I, I'm the saying, real I, truth. I, I'm, of saying, what's it going today. On. I'm saying it today. Without fear, people, I respect people. I don't fear anybody. You know what I'm saying? This country belongs to all of us. But I'm telling you, what you have forgotten is that everybody wants to throw stone at Mr. President. I have said this. No, what no, about no, no. the governors? No, that's not true. It's not no. about throwing stones. Have you all discussed anything about governors no, as we have been here? The thing about it is this. The Who has not destroyed this country? Just hang on a minute. Is if, it Mr. If, president? If I the president so. has policies in place, if government keeps coming up with policies, and then it turns out that those policies are not carried out, they're not executed, they're not implemented, you have to find it. Because if they keep saying, look, our policies are good, mm -hmm. but the result out there is not the result that they want. There must be Why? missing things. What link. went wrong? So that's what we're asking. So where, um, what could have happened? Who is not doing what they should have been doing? That's what we're asking you. Which ministry? So he will know and have a zero in look and say, listen, what's going on here? Why is this not happening? That's what we're asking. What we're asking. I will join you. By telling us the names? I will join you to conduct what I call investigative journalism. I want you to be part of this, not can just hearing from me. Something? But when yeah, you are but, asking but, me, you want me to name the go, ministry. Oh, when you want me to name the ministry. What is wrong in the name of the ministry? Of, of, of they were appointed of, by of, the president. Of, of and they're public yeah, officers. They're anyway. public officers. Of There's no big deal about any of ministry. Of Mr. President gave palliative to 36 states in this country, including the FCT, Abuja, <laughs> to succumb. What <laughs> happened? How do you run an economy based on palliatives? How? What are we talking about? Tell us what happened. Because what I'm happened? just seen on the front. Some of the, gov some of the governors, some of the states, mm -hmm. have you seen them sharing anything? Yes, because some of them are have saying. You seen, so because, do you blame Mr. President just, for just a for moment, to be? Just a moment. This is the leadership newspapers. It says yes. federal government palliatives one mm -hmm. week after 21 states await truckloads of grains. There we go. So what are they? So, you said they await. Yes. As, as In other words, they haven't, they haven't that. seen it. No. This is. I want, to believe, I, believe, is that I, believe that, I want to believe that this is journalism. I mean, journalism Listen, produces that, the papers. No, no, is that from federal government? government. This is a, huh? Who is writing down? Is that from federal government? That statement coming from federal this government? This is the front page of the daily. Listen uh, to me. Honorable. Let me tell you. I am also a journalist. I said, is that from federal government report? Or is that those who want to be one of the saboteurs that want to put the government bad light? Learn game is that it can work. You see, blaming people for your inefficiency. You have to blame people. No, for your inefficiency is not right. You so see, you are blaming the president as, no, for as, being, a, as a leader. For, as a leader, have they provided security and people are not going to farm? You are talking about food being costly. No, so food is costly. He has not provided no, no, security. Of course, of he course. Has not. The, so he's not the security there, of the he's country. He's not sitting there. Oh, honorable, oh, honorable, honorable, you're a good man. I know you. Thank you, you see, you're good. I know you, but you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong association, you're in the wrong group. You see, what is happening is that people cannot go to farm. That's why there is no grain. When people were going to farm and producing food, the cost of food was down. You see, it is the job of government to provide security. 
If all of us decide to carry arms everywhere, you have private army. I mean, it's not going to go well for the country. That's why the primary role of government is providing security. Do you think and it, that is where do you think, that is where things are wrong by destroying by this country. And as we are not providing security, do you think you remove the subsidy and the cost of oil is high. Do you, and do then you, how do they how will food become cheap? Listen, this is a very simple thing. As we are removing that, you are saying okay, dollar should be one thousand five hundred or it should be one million naira. I mean, what are we talking about? Do you think this is dollar that was thirty at the time? Thirty cob. I'm not saying thirty naira. I know one dollar was thirty thirty cob. Even up to 1980, how much was it? One dollar, one naira could buy you, uh, one, one naira could buy you two dollars. I remember, well, I'm talking about I remember, country, I remember. And people were producing, you see, by the time you cannot feed yourself, everything about your economy is on a tailspin. And I said it before, and I'll say it again. Any society that cannot protect and provide for the poor that are many can never protect the rich that are few. It's easy to be said that to be done. No, no, no. We can come here and say all no, this. No, no, no. You, see, you have not been in government. You as a How many policemen man. do we have in the country? Honorable. Do we have up to 600,000 policemen? How do you provide security in a country of 200 million people with less than 1 million policemen? And most of them are involved in VIP protection. So how do you provide that security? How many soldiers do we have? People are shouting professionalism. You join those that are shouting professionalism. Instead of using what you have, which is human resources, and produce like 2 million soldiers and pay them well. There is money to do that. You don't do that. We have less than, we have less than 300,000 uh, uh, soldiers. You think other people are not seeing our security architecture? If we it continue, is all there. If we continue, it is not about continuing. It's oh, about oh, the things oh, we are not doing right. Yes. We should do things right. And not to blame people for yeah, two things I, I, I'm not speaking for, I'm not their spokesman, but I must say this. It's your party. We have, it's your party. We have a country. And your party Nigeria. is failing. That's that, the point. That country, you who should tell Nigeria, the president that we must guide this, not we must guide this country jealously. Of course, we, we are, have no other country. Yes, we if are. We destroy this and country. That is why we are here. This is Nobody is going to destroy the country. Hold on. But the, the, the kind of those that are the government way are trying to do it. I am talking for way, way. the way forward. How to bring everybody together. Are they doing that? How many times have you called a, a meeting of political parties? Right, Even your party. Have you called a meeting of your colleagues to discuss the affairs of Nigeria? We need to anchor at that point. What are we talking about? These things are not doing the right thing. Tell the president these are these are the things that are happening. All right, Chief, we need to anchor at that point. Gosin Nuko, a former presidential candidate of UDP and Honorable Ehiozuwa Gwanaima is a federal commissioner, Code of Conduct Bureau, also a former member of House of Reps. Thank you both for coming on this Thank morning. Thank you for having me.